Guys, how are we doing? Today we are going to talk about five ways things can break on your tractor. Don't confuse this with the 10 ways on how to break your tractor, a video I did recently. This is going to be geared toward five ways that things just break on your tractor, whether it's an attachment, your tractor itself, whatever it might be. But sometimes things just go wrong. Other times you can influence the longevity before something does go wrong. The point being is to give you some perspective. Sometimes you have control, sometimes you don't. Sometimes things are just going to happen no matter if it's new, if it's old, if it's well taken care of, or if it's just a hunk of junk that you never cared about. Oh yeah, real quick, if you like what you see here, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Make sure you check out the other videos on the channel as well. Read the description also, a lot of helpful links down there, some cool accessories and attachments you can buy. Always go to goodworkstractors.com. So what happened to this hose right here? This is off of my uh, Toro 3100D Realmaster fairway mower, okay? Yeah, <laughs> I mow my lawn at my house with it. I actually have two of them right now, and I've had a hydraulic issue with both of them uh, with some major spills on my driveway. That's really annoying. But what happened here, I don't know if you can see it. I took some other video as well, but right here where my finger is, you can see this split. Hopefully you can see that right there. But this is simply something that happened from fatigue over time, okay? This wasn't anything that I could control. And in fact, there was a plastic shroud, a plastic cover going along this line and a lot of other lines that were on the machine as well. But simply over time it gave out. And I was mowing my front lawn the other day, just going back and forth. And then all of a sudden I went to make a pass and turn around. I look at the previous pass just to kind of get my line and I notice a line. It was a strong dark streak of hydraulic fluid going all the way down. I'm like, what the heck happened here? Right in the middle of the mow it started, you can see. And then I look underneath me and I was on the road actually, and right there it was just spilling out. And so I just hightailed it back up into my driveway to the side of the garage over there and parked it, went and grabbed my, uh, my oil pan really quick and put it underneath there and then tried to figure out what was going on. But that's what it was. This simply fatigued at that point there, this weak spot here over time. That machine, I think, is a 2008, okay? Um, I also have a 2014 that had a different um, issue going on with it as well, but things can just happen, you know? And I don't know if this machine sat outside, but I will tell you something like hoses, okay? Those plastics, those hoses, that kind of thing will fatigue quicker. They're gonna deteriorate quicker, you know? You might see them crack, same thing with tires, that kind of thing if they're sitting outside, but everything has a useful life. And so at a certain point, it's just gonna wear you're going to have to anticipate doing some repair work or some maintenance work to a machine. It just depends on the age of it. But don't go into a purchase of a machine and think it's going to be maintenance free forever. So with a fatigue item like that, that just wears out and then has a leak or maybe a bushing wears out or a bearing, that kind of thing. There's so much you can do as an owner and operator to extend the life of that part there before it does wear out. But at some point, things are just going to have to be repaired. So that's an item an owner operator has a little bit of control over. Hey, really quick here, I am going to plug this grease. This is Lube Shuttle, okay? You get 5% off. You get 5% off with code GWT at a lot of different places. Read the description. But this is a pretty unique product in the greasing world. Takes a lot of the headache out of it. These are just screw in, screw out tubes, okay? There's no, uh, you know, lever that you have to push in here and maintain a, a, a vacuum pressure. It just kind of does it all by itself. You can quickly change these out. You just see me twisting it on and off here. It's got this protective cover you put over top, but again, you can get this whole system super easy. Look at that. It's got a nice strong thread on there. I did a whole video about it. I'll post a link above too, but uh, check it out. 5% off, lube shuttle. You'll love it. Again. Another way that things can break on your tractor is going to be improper installation. And so this can happen either from the operator, you know, you as the owner of it, maybe if you take your loader on and off, going on and off incorrectly, your mower deck or a three-point attachment or something else. But this could also be improper installation when it's new from the factory or if you had a repair done at a dealer, for instance. And I'm going to give you a couple examples here really quick. So one, recently I had a 3043D, okay, a almost brand new tractor. It had five or six hours on it, something like that. This thing was basically sparkling in every way that you could possibly see. You know, I gave it the once over when I had it in here and everything checked out just fine. Ended up getting it delivered out to the customer's house, which was two hours away, something like that from here. I can't remember exactly. And it was a Saturday afternoon. He was out brush hogging his field, but the brush hog that he also got and the thing just stopped working. The three point hitch, it wouldn't go up and down. That handle shifted freely, that kind of thing. I touched on this recently uh, in another video that I did, but what happened is that three point linkage, a pin had just popped out or a nut had just come loose. I can't remember what it was, but he was able to figure it out and just kind of get it all put back together. But sometimes those things just aren't tightened down at the factory the right way when they're brand new. And so I'm guessing this was probably the first time that that three point hitch had any kind of significant use on it, especially with a load and probably going up and down and just wiggled that little part loose there. So it can happen even on a brand new or a nearly new tractor. I call something with six hours basically brand new. 
I had another experience with a customer. This was three or four years ago. I had uh, bought a whole batch of leftover um, three E tractors again, actually, believe it or not. And this customer had just got one home. These tractors had two or three hours on them, something like that. And he called me, you know, a week after he had it, the thing was just gushing hydraulic fluid right in his driveway out of the, out of the transaxle. What it turned out being was that there just wasn't something that was tightened down to spec. There was just some loose bolts, some loose hardware in there somewhere. So, you know, things even on brand new or nearly new machines, even if they're fine when they're here or when they're at the dealer that you buy them from, or if you buy it, you know, something nearly new from, you know, somebody in your neck of the woods, these kinds of things can still happen. You know, fortunately, if it's something newer like that, most likely it's gonna be covered under warranty if you can't make a simple fix like on a three-point hitch lever connecting some hardware. So another way something can be installed improperly is gonna be along the lines of hoses themselves, all right? And so on my 3046, going back to that one there, you know, this had uh, hoses going all the way up to the front to the loader and then down the loader mass or down the loader arms, I should say, down to the front for a grapple. Well, the way that the hoses were routed and configured, uh, when I turned on certain angles, the hoses actually rubbed uh, the tire, the front right tire that was on the tractor there. And I noticed that over time and you know, it actually took me a little while, you know, I, I was in the middle of something, okay, I'm gonna take care of that when I'm done and then I forget I get sidetracked. You know, this probably went on for three or four months before I actually uh, did something to, to get those hoses out of the way so they did not interfere and rub and chafe uh, the outer coating of those hoses against the tire. Now, fortunately, by that point, there was not a lot of wear that had taken place, but it's something like that, you know, or if you have hoses that are perhaps located closely to the exhaust or um, could be snagged, you know, when you're going through the woods and, and weeds and fields and that kind of thing as well, pay attention to those kinds of things because that's really an improper installation. And again, this comes down to the fact that everybody's not perfect, okay? You're just routing this stuff the best way that you think you know how, but there's always a better way to do it, right? There's always a smarter way to go about things, and so that's something that you as the operator can look for. You know, you definitely want to have high expectations, but I think it's also important to be realistic that things aren't going to go perfect all the time. So improper use is another way that things can break, and this is really something the operator has a heck of a lot of control over. You know, maybe as a new operator, you don't really know what could or could not break, or maybe what is a good proper use versus an improper use of your machine. And some of that is learning as you go, but still it's something to be aware of. You know, improper use, here's a good example. Using your finish mower, your belly mower on your, on your tractor to brush hog a field, okay? <laughs> that is an improper use. That is not what it's designed to do. And you're going to shorten the lifespan significantly, if not break something fairly immediately uh, on your mower deck. Another improper use would be potentially extending those bucket cylinders, okay? Say you want to, uh, push along with your bucket, but let's say you have it rolled all the way, like you're dumping something out. And so you have that bottom lip really steep down here and then you're pushing forward, okay? Well, that tractor has got a lot of torque and a lot of force behind it. So as it's moving forward, say that front loader lip on the bucket there just catches something and just extends those cylinders this way or something jams back. Well, with those rods fully extended like that or at near full extension, you're very likely to do some damage to that, especially if you're not being super conservative and careful. So that's an easy way to damage and have an expensive repair that is not gonna be covered any, under any kind of warranty. Those are just some examples of how improper use can damage your machine. I've made some other videos on that as well. So make sure you check out the top 10 list and the Tractor Newbie playlist that's on my station here because I think you'll find it very helpful. So improper use, that's something that you, the operator, have a lot of control about. So use your noggin, make sure you're aware of what you're doing. You're gonna save some money in your pocket there, unless you don't mind a big expensive repair bill. So this one here isn't really something that you as the operator has a whole lot of control over. It's really gonna be out of your hands and it's almost a little bit of a luck of the draw. Fortunately, something like this, the odds are pretty low that it's gonna to happen to you. What I'm talking about are gonna be faulty design, materials, or manufacturing process. So I saw this a lot back in the aerospace world when I was a program manager there. A lot of design and development and test lab, and then you go and put it in test planes, you put hundreds if not thousands of hours on this, you know. You prove it out in the lab, you prove it out in the field before you get it to market, what happens? It still fails at some point, you know. So sometimes the best laid plans, they, even though you think, how could this get out to the market the way that it is? You know, these manufacturers still will go through the, the paces. They'll do everything they think that they need to do, all the stress tests, what else, whatever else it might be, just to think they're putting out a quality product, just to find out, man, all that's been for naught, and we have to go back to the drawing board, make more tweaks, and figure out what's going on. Believe me, these manufacturers don't wanna to have to deal with something like that. They've already put a whole bunch of uh, money into developing the product to that point already. 
they hoped, they wished they had it correct the way that it should be, yet they could still have problems once it gets to the field. You can only test a product so many ways, and so sometimes you will have faulty materials as well. And in the aerospace world, again, I'm, I'm going back to that, it's amazing at how many um, faults there would be in different metals and different polymers, different uh, plastics. We did all sorts of stuff. And it's just, it's way more common than you think. And so there's gonna be an acceptable level of defect in a material and an unacceptable level. But at a certain point, it's really just a risk assessment before you're comfortable putting it out in the general public. So again, really that's nothing that you have a lot of control over. You know, it's really just a bit of a luck of the draw if you happen to get something with a, a defective material in it where maybe it has a very um, weak joint or a weak uh, structure right at a breaking point or at a, at a certain critical point and you just happen to snap something like on a, a, a grapple or something along those lines. So wear and tear is the other way that damage is just gonna happen. And yeah, you as the operator, I guess, have control over that. However, some of these components are designed to be replaceable with that wear and tear. So a very common application for that is gonna be something like gauge wheels on a mower deck or mower blades or uh, skid bars or skid shoes on snow plows and snow blowers and box blades and um, rear blades and all that kind of thing, okay? So these are replaceable parts for a reason. And some of them are more expensive than others, you know, but the point is, is that a gauge wheel, I mean, it's just gonna wear out over time. More blades are gonna wear out. All these things are gonna wear out. And there's really not a lot that you can do if you're gonna use the product, you know? And it's gonna be based on how much you're using that specific product, of course, because if you're using a snow plow blade less often than those wear bars and those skid shoes are not gonna wear out nearly as quickly. But the more often you're using it, you know, mower blades, for example, if you're using those all summer, using them every day, they're gonna wear out a lot quicker. So yeah, it's up to you as the operator. However, there's a trade-off, right? Because if you don't want to uh, worry about having to pay for the replacement cost of the, uh, the replaceable parts, then you're not gonna use it as often, right? But if you're gonna use it all the time, perhaps it's making you money or perhaps you just need to, you have to expect that you're gonna to have to go through those replaceable parts more frequently. So there's a lot of ways, right? And there's some ways that you have more control. There's some ways that you have less control. There's some ways you have no control at all. And some of it's gonna be covered under warranty if you have a newer machine, some of it's not. Some of it doesn't matter if you have a brand new machine or a 20 year old machine. Things are just going to happen at a certain point. Gaskets, seals, those kind of things, they just give out, right? At some point, an engine needs an overhaul. That's just how it goes. Tires wear out, all that kind of stuff. Hey, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Again, this is just meant to give you a little bit of perspective, go into things with an open mind, kind of understand that you know things are going to break. You can't just buy a tractor and then expect no other cause to come about. Just kind of plan that because it's gonna change your mindset. It's gonna help you um, go into it with a little bit better, more positive attitude about it when something does go wrong, just because things that are mechanical are going to break. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see here, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Make sure you check out the other videos on this channel. Read the description, a lot of helpful links down there, some a lot of little fun things you can buy for your machine as well, and go to goodworkstractors.com. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.